Imagine your doctor discovering that you have a life-threatening disease, but then telling you that there's no reason to panic because they can fix it simply by editing it out of your genes and DNA. It really may sound like the start of a sci-fi movie or the distant future, but this new technology is already here and already changing lives. From a child, Victoria Gray has been plagued by sickle cell disease, a rare disorder that has ravaged her body with pain and fatigue. A good day could easily turn into a terrible day where I would be in pain and I would have to go to the emergency room. In fact, she says hospitalizations were practically a monthly occurrence. I was at the end of my ropes. I started getting depressed with my sickle cell and because I was in the hospital so much. Victoria, a mother of four, says the debilitating disease was also starting to impact her children. A lot of times I wouldn't be able to go to functions um, because I would be in the hospital so much. And my kids would come ask me before they wanted to do something. They would be like, Mom, are you sick? Depression gave way to desperation. Why were you willing to essentially be a guinea pig here? At that time, I felt like I wasn't living. I was just existing. So I wanted to try something different. And to, at that point for me, it was like, why not? You know, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had anything to lose. Two years ago, Victoria learned about a revolutionary new sickle cell treatment that had the potential to change her life. Only it had never been performed on anyone else. We told her she would be the first person in the world to get it. It has never been tried in humans. She was adamant to um, say, sign me up. I am ready to do this. So Victoria became the first sickle cell patient to be treated with a gene editing tool called CRISPR. The astounding technology actually makes precise edits in DNA. The process combines RNA with a protein called Cas9 to find and fix faulty genes. It took away a lot of the risk that I was worried about. Sickle cell disease alters the shape of red blood cells, restricting the blood's ability to flow through the body. So what you do is you use something called electroporation, which is you give a very precise amount of electricity to the cell to make... Um, pores or holes in the membrane of the stem cells. And then the CRISPR-Cas9 is basically taken inside the cell with the use of something called guide RNA, which basically directed exactly to the area where you want it to go. After the guide RNA finds its target, the Cas9 protein makes a specific break to the DNA, allowing it to repair itself or for scientists to modify. Think about your uh, genetic material as a book with thousands of pages, and there is an area or basically a one word that you are trying to find and edit. And that's what uh, CRISPR-Cas9 allow you to do very precisely. CRISPR-Cas9 editing has exploded in use since 2012 when scientists, including Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier, published their explanation of how it works in Science Magazine. Last October, both women were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. This year's prize is about rewriting the code of life. Imagine a brave new world come to life. Victoria is now part of a group of patients in a trial with CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex Pharmaceuticals using CRISPR-Cas9 to treat sickle cell disease. The patients initially come here for a checkup, get screened, and if they are basically eligible, they enroll. We collect the stem cells from the patients after collecting the stem cells, we gene edit them and then freeze them. In her case, her doctors wanted to use CRISPR to turn off a critical gene. The technology we are using is basically finding that switch and turning it off. Victoria underwent chemotherapy to get rid of the old cells in her bone marrow, creating the sickled cells to make room for her new cells. When we put these cells back in patients, can help mitigate the um, uh, the sickling in the red blood cells and eliminate the complications related to the disease. I mean, you say this like this is just kind of something that happens every day. I'm hearing this like this is miraculous. It sounds like science fiction that we are able to take your stem cells, find one area and target it, and then reinfuse the cells and voila, you are better, but uh, it actually works. It's early, but so far the results are looking good. So good, in fact, that Victoria's progress has received national attention. I feel so much better. It's been almost two years and I haven't had a hospital stay or an emergency room visit. So that's big for me. 
we actually made a small crack in the door. And I hope that what, uh, what we have shown here will open the door wider to target more diseases. The implications are huge. CRISPR could ultimately revolutionize how we treat cancer and HIV. It's already being used to alter plants and animals. Anything that's got DNA could have its, its DNA modified using these tools. Last March, in a groundbreaking surgery in Oregon, doctors completed the first ever CRISPR gene editing inside the human body on a blind patient. And the CRISPR technology has caught the eye of a high profile backer. It was eight years ago that uh, CRISPR came along and uh, it continues to evolve in some pretty fantastic uh, ways. But with this new and powerful tool, also comes an exercise in responsibility. The kind of clearest example would be uh, a gene therapy that was developed to treat muscular dystrophy, like a muscle wasting disease, that someone, once they felt it was safe enough, could say, well, let's, let me um, prescribe this to somebody who wanted to get stronger. Are you familiar with genetic editing? Changes will be incredibly unpredictable. You've probably seen movies that imagine this is the future way of life. Genetics, what can it mean? The ability to perfect the physical and mental characteristics of every unborn child. The distant future imagined in classic movies like Gattaca may not be so far off after all. Those claims overnight that the world's first genetically edited babies have been born. Chinese scientist Han Jinkui caused an uproar in 2018 after announcing that he had used CRISPR-Cas9 editing on human twin embryos to make them resistant to HIV. Sudun and Nala were born normal and healthy. Professor Jeffrey Kahn is now part of an international commission focusing on the ethics of gene editing and what a future with it could mean. It's a little bit of uncharted territory um, and, and really a lot of work being done to try to find a way forward that will work, that will be effective, that you know manages this new technology in responsible ways. It hasn't been done before. Imagining a responsible future that if you ask Victoria Gray, may be turning into a life-changing reality right before our eyes. Do you feel like this is something that will be able to help a lot of people? It really changed my life, and I hope it can change the life of so many other people, even those who don't have sickle cell, who may have other um, disorders, and l just looking for hope. Victoria now has that and then some, and at 35 years old, finally feels like she's living for the very first time. It really just seems miraculous to me. Yes, it was my little miracle. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.